Hello, my name is Winston Leo. I'm a medical oncologist from Australia and I'm going to explain today what the peritoneal space is and what the peritoneum is. This is a guide for patients with pseudomyxoma or peritoneal carcinomatosis. As a disclaimer, I'd like to say these descriptions are quite simplified and not intended for students studying medicine or surgery and also that my drawings aren't very good. So let's meet Jill. Jill's a 45-year-old woman who's been feeling unwell for the last six months. She's had abdominal bloating, a swollen abdomen, and irregular bowel habits. Jill is annoyed that her friends say she looks nine months pregnant. When we examine her, her tummy is bloated and distended and quite firm to touch. After a bunch of tests, Jill finds out that she has a condition called Pseudomyxoma peritonei, or PMP. PMP is a low-grade appendix cancer that fills the abdomen, or peritoneal space, with jelly, also known as mucin. The next few slides will explain the peritoneum and the peritoneal space. We do this by imagining cutting somebody in half, just like a CT scanner does, and folding the slice up so that we look from feet up towards the head. This stylized diagram shows the abdomen. We have the abdominal wall and internally we have the bowels and abdominal organs. In this diagram I've added the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a shiny membrane that coats the surface of the abdominal organs, this is called the visceral peritoneum, and folds in to line the inside surface of the abdominal wall, this is called the parietal peritoneum. If you could view this in 3D, it would form a bag, and inside the walls of the membrane is the peritoneal space. This space is normally collapsed down and lined by a small amount of lubricant that allows your bowels and other organs to move around. Aside from the peritoneal space, we recognise that organs can be intraperitoneal or coated by the peritoneum, and these include the first and fourth parts of the duodenum the small bowel, the cecum, the appendix, parts of the colon and rectum, the liver, spleen and tail of pancreas, and in women the uterus, tubes and ovaries. Organs not directly associated with the peritoneum are referred to as the retroperitoneal organs, and these include the second and third part of the duodenum, the ascending and descending colon, the pancreas, the kidney and adrenals, and their blood vessels as well as the first part of the ureters which drain urine away from the kidneys and the major blood vessels, the inferior vena cava and the aorta. Generally speaking, the intraperitoneal organs are mobile and can move around the abdomen, whereas the retroperitoneal organs are fixed. In this slide I'd like to imagine the peritoneum and peritoneal space in a different way. Imagine taking a box to represent your abdominal wall. Into the box we drop some sausages. These represent your abdominal organs. Over the top of the box we place a vacuum seal bag. This bag is placed over the sausages, not around the sausages. After placing the vacuum seal bag over the sausages, we suck the air out of the bag and then close over the top of the box. This gives us a schematic view of the peritoneal space and the peritoneum. The reason why we can do abdominal surgery is that we can open this space and move the organs around and examine them. This is different from cutting into a leg, for example, which is much more like cutting into a chop. The peritoneal space can fill up with lots of different things. Fluid buildup is called ascites. It can fill with jelly or mucin, as in Jill with her PMP, or it can be infected, which we call peritonitis. Cancer can get into this space and we call this peritoneal carcinomatosis. If your bowels perforate or if you undertake an operation, the space can be filled with air. In PMP, the appendix becomes obstructed by low-grade cancer or appendiceal neoplasm. The appendix is located at the base of the bowel at the piece called the cecum. Jelly or mucin builds up in the appendix and this forms a lump called an appendiceal mucoseal. This can rupture into the peritoneal space and lead to so-called jelly belly. It can take months or years to build up enough jelly to cause problems. This is what's happened in Jill. 
Because pseudomyxoma confines itself to the peritoneal space and doesn't spread to other organs, we can undertake surgery to try and remove all of the jelly from the abdomen. This is called cytoreductive surgery or peritonectomy. Usually we combine this with heated chemotherapy, which we know as HIPEC. This is delivered directly into the abdomen at the time of the operation and offers a long-term chance of removing the pseudomyxoma permanently. Thanks for watching this short explanation about the peritoneum and the peritoneal space. If you have more questions, ask your doctor or contact me at this email address.